It should be fun. Oh, we're live. Oh, we're live. We're live. Okay, so I guess we will go ahead and get started. Um, yeah. Shalom, shalom, mishpacha. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. Today we are short one of the original panelists, and that's uh, Chief Zebulon. A um, little bit out of the weather, man, you know, send some prayers up for him to recover. Um, but today's topic is safeguarding your household. I think it's a real interesting one. It's a little, um, it, it always, we always seem to, I think Shamika brought this out last week. We always seem to connect all of them together. You know what I'm saying? And in order to safeguard a household, you would think you would need some type of structure, you know, uh, some type of leadership or uh, teamwork involved. And, and the, the star players in the family, family's team is the man and the woman. Right, or the woman and the man, however you want to say it. So uh, I'm going to start off by just reading the synopsis, I guess you could say, of what uh, safeguarding the household is. It says, in a nuclear family, the husband and wife form the first lines of defense when it comes to protecting the household from harm. Yet, this construct differs from family to family. What should defense look like for our family? Is it necessary to own a gun in today's times or firearm? Why or why not? And that's the reason I say firearm, because if you're black, do not say gun to a police officer. Why or why not? And how do we ensure that safety is top of mind when safeguarding the household? Now, uh, as we continue, uh, Sister Tamar is going to go through and reread the questions, but I just want to read that out. So um, I guess we could go in the order that I'm seeing. You know, um, wait, how did you want to do that? Did you, did you want to still have you be the last person that, that speak as far as the order, Tamar? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because I, I'm, I'm, I don't know much about this at all, so I, I'm happy to uh, respond last. Okay, cool. Um, so I guess we could go with Yeshayahu, uh, then Shamika, um, then myself for now, then Tamar. I know we should be having some people come in soon. Oh, my cousin just messaged me. He yeah, I see gone. him on here. I see him on here, but I don't know how he can respond. I see it says attendees, so I, but I can't make him a panelist, so I don't really know. He probably, hold on, let me see. Here's a number right here. What happens if we click it? I don't know. I'll let you figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Tell yeah, me. I'm going to try to get him on here. Yeah. I don't know how to make him on here, though, so. Okay. Just. They asked for the ID. Oh. Did oh, you... I did. Okay. Hold on. People that's listening, give me one second. I did just send a member ID. Uh, you need the ideas. It's on the thing that I sent you, if you're still listening, Andre. Uh, if you want me to just read it off, I could give it to you. You could call back. But um, the member ID is, and the reason I'm trying to get him on, you all, because he's a season. Uh, he go to uh, different um, courses and stuff like that with FBI agents, with cops, uh, stuff like that, you know, building his skill as a, you know, someone with a firearm and he a monster too. But anyway, here is the, and he has a family, he has a wife, been together since they was for about what, 16 years now? So, so they've been together for two years? 16. No, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I was trying to be funny that they, never mind. Uh, the number is, you funny. <laughs> the web ID number is, write it down, I can then just call back and type it in, uh, 183. One eight three for those that's calling in the web number web ID number webinar ID one eight three seven six three five three four. Again, it's one eight three seven six three five three four. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna have an opening, you know, uh, starting with Yeshayahu, uh, Shamika. If Andre get in on time, he could give an opening to just the topic in general. And then we hit the questions, and then of course myself, and then Tamar, and then Tamar, you have the floor for facilitating again. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? Oh. Sorry, one okay. one thing too. We uh said last week we were gonna, we were gonna have a timer, so we're going yeah. seven minutes is your response time. Uh, so when you start, when you take a deep breath in, I'm gonna start the timer at that point. Make sure you re <laughs> repeat that when he come back on too, because. I see oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When you come on, just if you can. All right, okay. cool. Yeah. I'm going to mute okay. myself. Okay, cool. Uh, good go. Race against the clock. 
All right. Um, this is really interesting. Um, I'm not going to use all seven minutes, even though Shema doesn't believe that. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, the way I look at it, um, protecting your family is first and foremost, um, whichever avenues that can be, whether it's, um, you know, you're taking care of someone like um, older relatives, moms, pops, grandparents, or you're in your own nucleus and you've already successfully created your own house and you have to protect your kids, wife, etc. Either way, husband, etc. cetera. Um, I don't think protection lies on one gender. I don't think it's uh, genderly expressed. I think anybody could do that. But um, the question of firearms, um, comes up in this topic when we're talking about protection, especially nowadays. Um, depending on the state that you're in, um, the laws that regard around operation and ownership of a firearm changes. Um, where I'm at, we have some of the more stricter um, gun restrictions laws in the United States, from at least my knowledge. Um, so that makes things a little more difficult. But um, I think it's important for families to discuss how to maintain, how to properly use, or, you know, even the aspect of not using them at all. So coming into this conversation is definitely important, especially in this day and age. Um, you know, at one point in time, um, the United States was more so ran by militia and smaller people are units from townships and people kind of band together to create a um, military force to oppose anyone. Um, even looking at, since this is a, um, a show that's conscious about, um, you know, dark and melanin people, black and brown folks, um, some of our more, uh, militant um, movements like um, the Black Panther Party, um, their use of firearms and demonstration and understanding of how to use them helped uh, keep their community safe also. So it's definitely a, a deep conversation and I'm, I'm gonna yield there and pass the mic on. Okay, it's my turn. Um, I definitely believe that um, the woman and the man uh, should know how to protect and take care of um, the family and the household. Um, it's not it's not guaranteed that everybody gonna always be around each other. So I should know how to handle myself and protect myself as well as my children. So. Um, I do, we do have those like conversations and talks. I def, I teach my girls, you know, to be strong and protect themselves, but I also teach my boys that um, their only option is to take care of their sisters. If, don't, if they don't protect them, nobody else will. So um, I teach that, but um, as far as guns in the house, I, I do believe that there should be firearms in the house. Um, should the kids know about them? No. Should they be locked away safely? Yes. But um, I do not know his name. Begin with a D. I want to call him Derek. But there's a guy, it's a brother. Um, Y'all may know who he is. He got tattoos all over his face and all that stuff. But he's very, very smart. And he has children. He teaches his daughter, um, his sons, all of them, how to use firearms, how to break down. His daughter is like, 10 and she is phenomenally educated on guns i'm talking about break them down uh put them together clean them blindfolded in the matter of seconds so i believe um i don't know if i'm ready right now but i believe at a certain age i do uh, want my children to be educated about firearms in the right way because how the world is today it, it's nine times out of ten they're gonna run into them hear about them or see them so I want them to know how um, to properly use them or not touch them, not deal with them, you know, things of that nature, but I yield.
I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, so I, we're trying to get the brother on, and I don't know how to do that. And um, Isaiah, are you using your phone right now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh. Uh, well, okay. No, I'm not using my phone. I did manage to get my laptop. Oh, okay, on. I was trying to see how we can get him on. I don't, yeah. I don't know how to do the phone thing. I, don't I have Zoom. Does he have the Zoom app, or is he calling in? Can he download the app? I think if he tries that, that'll be better because I know people have gotten on, they've done that on their phone. Yeah, I've been on from the app. I can talk them through the app, not necessarily. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my opener. He'll be on when he can and we'll readdress any questions that. Okay. Because his insight, cool. trust me, it's definitely going to be, uh, or his perspective and insight definitely will be uh, appreciated, appreciated, trust. But my take on. The, oh, uh, no, I, no, I'm, no, I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, you didn't, you didn't go? Oh, my bad, I'm sorry. No, I didn't go. I apologize. Y'all all look alike. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, my take on it in general, um, Safeguard or what's the, what's the title? I forgot the title. Oh, Safeguarding Your Household. I think that Safeguarding Your Household should be um, definitely taken seriously. I believe a lot of us in the so-called Black community are Lacking completely. Hold on. Somebody's in the attendees thing. Galaxy. Who is this? I don't know who this is. Can you um, bring that person in? Um, so I don't. Who is Galaxy S9? Is that Andra? Is that you? You can unmute yourself if that's you. I just want to know if that's you or not. You're unmuted. You can say who you are so we know who you are. Oh. I'm not sure what that is, but Andrew's here. I see his name. So I'll just come over. That's him? Okay, cool. So, yeah, so, so he can bring his in after me then. All right, so I think it's, uh, I think to just give a general statement of the opening, yeah, the title, I believe that it is um, not really looked at in our community. It's very, we're very ignorant to it. I think it even, it even goes past firearm, but we can speak solely on firearm if we want to, but I want to address other things. We should understand self-defense. We should, you know, teach our children self-defense. And if we don't know it, we should learn it. Um, as far as the firearm, like the sister Shamika was saying, I believe that um, the the example she brought forth on the, what's the name of the guy she said the name was? I think his uh, name Derek. Derek? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, she said that teaching the child how to break stuff down, blindfolding and things of that nature. Uh, not sure the age of the child, but I think it's, uh, I think it's smart to do that. Um, I've seen videos and I know of ch children that's under 10 that's doing it. And um, as far as what she said, as far as um, I believe um, not showing them, I guess we should wait to how the show plays out, see how everything goes, and see if uh, if, it, if the perspective changes or if it doesn't. But I appreciate all y'all. I'm ready to see y'all thoughts. Uh, I think we should be equipped. And I'll explain why as we continue to go. That's it. So we got uh, Andra, we got Galaxy S9, and then we got you, Tamar. So I'm going to go ahead, Andra, I'm not sure if you, I'm going to unmute your mic and can you hear us? Yeah, you're good. Hey, what's going on? Not much. I'm just chilling. Good. So you know, it was a hot so early, but I think we are good now. You know, that's cool. So we're just doing our open like opening thoughts about the topic. So anything you wanted to offer uh before we get into the actual questions, you have the you have the floor. All right. Um no, nah, it's just you know, I'm pretty sure my cousin already gave a rundown on the situation, but um I just feel collectively as a um, minority group in this country, we we lacking behind this, you know? We lacking behind self-defense. It, it, it's, it's not at um, a priority within our uh, lives. Like, we, we put this on the back collectively, you know? We, we have a few individuals that do it, but I noticed over the past years, I'm starting to see a slight change in that. And the only reason, like, I, I mean, I know tomorrow, me and you, we're friends, and um, 
Shalom on Facebook. But the only reason I have things like that posted on social media and broadly like that, where even if any individual clicked on my name on Facebook, they probably would see a few videos that got public. But it's, it's to try to bring normality to the situation because it's so taboo to see African Americans with firearms or training. You know, it, it's, 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 it's crazy beyond belief. Like, but, um, I mean, I'm, I'm just ready to get this thing started as far as on, like, my thoughts on self-defense and home protection and things, even with children. So, I'll pass the mic. All right, we appreciate that, too. And um, there's somebody else on here that uh, Galaxy S9, I guess if if you want to say something, you can unmute your mic. Also, I forgot to say that we're trying to... Uh, Keep, uh, keep keep everything. Uh, keep the uh, comments kind of condensed, so we, we we implement it like a time limit. So at seven, you know, at seven minutes, the whole computer blows up and the show ends. So don't don't let us don't don't let the show fall. At the uh, seven minute point, just, just stop talking mid mid conversation. Uh, but I don't know who this Galaxy S nine is for real for real. So if you if you want to say something, I meet your phone. If not, we're gonna assume that you're just here to to listen. So. Okay, just listening. Thank you. Um, uh oh, I did it again. Pressing too many buttons. Okay. Um, go ahead, Isaiah. Oh. You gonna say something, Isaiah? No, no, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I okay, believe it's your turn to share your thoughts, Tamar. I know. I'm just. I'm doing a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's. I, I got you. Okay. All right. So, um, what's I gonna say? Oh, so my thoughts on the topic is I don't really have a lot of. I, mean, I do have my personal opinion, but I, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. Um, I have an early memory of my father being by the door with a rifle. So and I grew up in Chicago, so I remember that. So I know he had a gun, but I don't remember him ever like showing us it or nothing. So I don't really have an actual um. Uh, you know, understanding of it, and and I, I understand, so I'll, I'll just say broadly, self-defense wise, broadly, I do understand the importance of it. I think everybody should be able to, and if, whether or not you have kids or not, should be able to defend themselves. I think that um, we are, we've been taught to be really passive, and we've also been taught, improperly taught how to, um, to, 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 to garnish, to, not garnish, but to uh, control our power. So I, I think I said a few weeks ago, you know, you either are considered a punk, as far as a man, if you don't say nothing at all, and if you go the opposite way, then you were super aggressive, toxic mas masculinity. Same thing with the woman. She's kind of already, already, already assumed to be very meek and quiet, but then if she speaks up in any way, she's just like talking too much, right? So we're definitely unbalanced in a lot of different ways, and I'm sure this topic is another example of how we're, uh, I agree with Andre, we don't, you know, the, the concept of guns, you know, you have, I think you even have extremes. You have people, and I know people who, um, have classes with brothers where they go and they are there with their wives and they go to the gun range. I know these people these people exist. Have I met any of them up close and personal? No, I have not. So I look forward to again hearing what everybody has to say about it, and then I'll give my opinion as we go out as I as I listen more. So with that in mind, I'll oh, go ahead, Shamal. Wait, before we get, can we add a question in there? I love that thing that Shamika brought out brought out uh, about the like the age. What's the proper age? You know what I'm saying? to uh, show them the firearm. I think she was going along those lines. Shamika, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh yeah, that's right, I was. Okay, yeah, I think that Yeah. Okay, I think that'd be a good question to add because we might have time, hopefully, if we can, let's throw that in. And uh, one thing I want to throw out, man, I'm glad y'all, we brought this up because I, I went to a thing in Missouri with my cousin. Maybe he'll speak on that. But he was the only so-called black person there. The only one, y'all. Tamar, I was on the phone with you when I was out there, I think. He was the only yep. so-called black person out of every regular person, FBI or cop there. He was it. I would have been it if I would have known. You know, I would have been that too if I would have known. But anyway. All right, let's go. He put the time up. I saw you yesterday. <laughs> I heard a ticking sound, loud ticking sound. But no. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um... So the first question is, uh, and again, we'll go on order, Isaiah, 
Shamika. Shama, right. Okay, Andra. No, Andra. No, you, you did. It was Shamana and Andra. <laughs> I'm last, so that's all that matters. Okay. All right. The first question is, um, and I'll also type it if you're on the Zoom link and I'll type the question in uh, if you need to be reminded what it is. So the first question is, what should defense look like for a family? So again, what should defense look like for a family? That's the first question. Brother, you're uh, muted, brother. You're muted. Am I unmuted now? Um hey, yeah, somebody about time of him though. Y'all already know. I, I got I got I got time on myself, oh, man. I'm already 20 you, seconds in. You timing yourself. Uh, <laughs> look, look, you can't be <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Recompose. Let's go. All hmm. right. Um, uh, what should should defense look like? Um, I think defense should be anything within your means to protect yourselves as a as a family, as a unit, as a nucleus, without obstructing the law. Um, and that's that's necessary. Um, and and I can uh give a personal account that's gonna be within my time slot, Shema. And um go ahead and explain what I mean. So um for instance, there's some states that are a little more lenient there's some states that are a little more aggressive when it comes to what you can and can't do in the uh, realms of self-defense. Um, here in New Jersey, there's no technical self-defense law. So if you do anything outside of what is deemed um, probable, then y you will be going to jail. Um, in some cases, that can be for instance, um, matter of fact, let me put it this way. When I was um, doing security, uh, we had a rule where we only could ag aggress as much as the aggressor. So it had to be equal force. So if we got punched in the face once, we were only allowed to punch that person in the face. Um, nothing else past that because then you would be further aggressing. Um, the ideal is to always uh, de-escalate. And that goes into uh, something Tamar was mentioning, um, even about being considered the punk if you're not doing anything or if you try to use uh, alternate means besides aggression, which I would hope we get into that conversation um, as this show uh, continues. But um, whatever is designed that you can do within your power, that's not going to put you in more harm or take you away from your family. Um, quick example, uh, here in my grandmother's home, we had a, an intruder come in and I wound up ha having to uh, slam the guy. And I, I had the ability to do more damage, but I just put my knee in his chest and uh, kind of detained him to the police uh, guy here. Um, I felt as though that was within my comfort zone. I didn't want to do anything else because I didn't want to put myself in jeopardy of uh, being arrested. Although, um, you know, there's other situations um, where people have escalated things uh, a little more. Uh, for example, we had the Bun B situation. I don't know if anybody knows who Bun B is. Uh, he's a rapper uh, from Texas. Yeah, I heard that story. Right. And uh, the brother uh, had somebody try to come in there and um, I believe steal his cars or take his money or something like that. You know, it's a rapper. Um, the guy came in and a shootout happened. Um, if he didn't have his firearm, that could have went a completely different way. Could have been a lot rough, could have been a lot more dangerous, but because he was smart and using his firearm, that, that kept him safe and his family safe. Um, even though he did it with, a uh, with nothing but some draws on, which I thought was hilarious. Y'all can go hear the story on your own. I no, you ain't hear the story right. He ain't had no draws on that. <laughs> but um, but uh, the point that I'm making is it's it's important to know what your laws are and act within those laws to keep as many people safe and alive as you can, including yourself. So if that means sometimes, hey, getting somewhere out of Dodge and Hotton then hey you it, it, don't let your pride put you in a position where 
you can possibly do more harm. That's either being an aggressor or, or, or trying to de-escalate. If you got to run and hide, then go put yourself in a position where you can hide until safety comes. If you can handle that, then do whatever the law permits. If that's punching the guy out and putting him in a headlock till the police come or to some type of authority comes, they handle it that way. Um, for time restraints, uh, I kept this to five minutes. I'm going to yield and let the next person go. Okay, me. So for me, um, defense in the home. Um, my husband would say for me and the kids to be somewhere secure and call the police while he handled the situation in the home. But I feel like I understand like de-escalating the situation and stuff like that. But what I'm used to and what I know is when people enter your home, they're not coming empty-handed. So um, in order to protect my family, I'm going to use whatever force I feel is necessary. Am I trying to kill somebody? No. But I'm going to use whatever force is necessary to make sure that me and my children are okay. So if I got to shoot you, whatever, because I'm, I'm a woman. I can't body slam you or whatever. If you coming in forcefully as a man, I'm going to do what I got to do to make sure my baby's okay. So for me in my home, defense looks like um, a plan. So if you hear this, while this is happening here, you take my cell phone and you call to me while I go check this out. And if you hear this, stay in this closet. Don't move until you hear sirens or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like defense in my home is a plan and whatever force is necessary. So everybody know when something happens, they go to their delegated corners and do what they're assigned to do so that we all end up okay at the end. That's it for me. That was excellent. I loved it. That was excellent, um, especially hearing it from a woman's point of view. So the question, what should defense look like in a family? <sighs> what should defense look like in a family? I think the number one thing that defense should look like is, um, it's a few things, uh, structure, preparation, and skill set. Structure, preparation, and skill set. Preparation mean practice as well. So structure, preparation, and skill set. But in order for you to have those three things, education. That's what defense should look like. Education. A lot of us are educated um, in how to defend. That's why a lot of us who might defend ourselves one get killed because we're not really educated on how to defend ourselves two we're not prepared because we don't uh practice it preparation that's still education it goes back to last week when the brother tried to uh not try sorry i'm not i'm saying it wrong when he brought up the bruce lee proverb um about doing a thousand different things that's so racist. That's so that's that's so racist. It was a Korean proverb. You said the Bruce Lee proverb. I say Bruce Lee because that's a picture that pop up when I first saw it. <laughs> doing doing a thousand things one time versus one thing a thousand times. So preparation is included with education. You know what I'm saying? Um, and skill set. Uh, one time, my cousin. He I don't know if he's gonna bring it up, but he brought. Um, he was at my 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 home with. Uh, a couple guys in my house. Did y'all you, you start my timer, by the way? Because I didn't, so let me know. Um, he was at my home, and it was a way, like, say if you're in your room and you're coming out, if you if you come out with your arms straight out, the person, the threat, sees it. But if you come out with a different form, I can't do all that right now. 
But if you come out with a different form, probably a shortened form and more direct and quick, now it's no time for that threat to see you. So that's a skill set. But it's an education for you to learn that skill set because naturally we don't know these things. So my answer, short and brief, is education. Education, like what the sister uh, said, uh, Shamika, how did her children know those things that she said? She had to educate them. So the first thing to me is education. And with that, I yield. So, Andre, I'm not sure if you you still with us because uh, you can offer your thoughts now if you want. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right. <clears throat> so, when we're talking about home defense for the family, I'm gonna try to be brief with this. But you know, like a nucleus of a cell is consists of a lot of things. So, um, first thing is situation awareness. You know, um, in my home, before I go to bed or anything, we always check the points of entry, make sure doors are locked, windows are locked, um, things like that. Also, um, there's night lights. We have certain points in our house where we can see. Um, another thing is firearms. Firearms, what type of firearms? You know, some people, you know, live in apartments, you know, you can't have an AR-15 to defend yourself in a small apartment because that round will go through wall after wall after wall into your neighbor's wall. Um, so that's one thing that I say people need to realize what type of caliber they're using. And on all of my firearms that I have for home defense, there's a weapon light on it. Uh, usually I go for like 800 lumens. Lumens is the power, the brightness of that light. So um, Shimano, I showed him a drill where he was coming in the house, but I shine a light on him. He couldn't see. You cannot shoot what you can't see. Also, that light needs to be on your weapon to identify what you're shooting at, whether that intruder is unarmed or rather it's your kid coming in, you know, in your room or whatever. Um, another thing that people lack and often is neglected is medical. You know, you're talking about defending, which meaning you're talking about fight, whether it's physical, whether it's with a knife, whether it's with a firearm. And in order to punch holes, you gotta be ready to plug holes. So if you, your, your spouse, your child, whoever gets hit after that action is over with, are you, what are you prepared to do? You know, Lou Johnny or, you know, Keisha, whatever your kid name, after she gets popped by this bad guy, are you prepared to help her, you know, medically until first responders arrive? And that's why my mindset is I am my own first responder. Nobody is going to respond to the situation first but me. And that's what my family looks to, and I teach them that. Like right now in all of our vehicles, we got tourniquets. Tourniquet is if you've ever been in the military or whatever, that's basically – um, a lot of medics carry, I think regular grunts, they carry it now, but once you get shot or whatever, if it's like a limb, legs, arms, things like that, you apply two inches above the room, wound, you twist it to shut off the bleeding. You know, you got femoral arteries, you have major arteries in these limbs. Um, I have, um, combat guys to stuff the wound, things like that. So along with defense, we need to think about medical as well. Um, but that's one one of the one of the ways that we do it in my house. Um, we also have plans, certain things set up like by the door. There's a can of pepper spray, you know, just in case <laughs> you're not gonna always go to the door with a firearm, but something there in reach to get that intruder off for a while. But you have to have a plan, and not only that, you have to go over that plan. You have to rehearse that plan and. If it doesn't go this way, is it, a lot of this stuff is problem solving. It's like fast pace chess, just like boxing. You know, I boxed before too, and the same thing. You know, you got a combo, but it doesn't work. You got to think real fast on your feet. So that's why Shaman, he was telling you about the certain drills we did in his home just to show him, like, hey, sometimes this doesn't work, but you got to think fast, rapid on your feet. But um, 
that's I don't want to hold up everyone's time, so I'm gonna pass the mic. Real quick, you all that's listening, um, like he still had three minutes left. You can relinquish your time, kind of like what me and Yeshayahu did, and he just did. Or you could go to four or seven minutes. So you know, if you want to continue, take the four or seven. You know, but uh, okay. Oh, um, Shema, uh, Shamika asked the question. What's the name of that kit, Andre, that you uh speaking of? Um, is she she's on Facebook because I can send her the link right away. But it's it's called a tourniquet. Um, they're on Amazon, eBay. If she. I, you know what? I can probably put a link in the chat. I don't know if they'll let her go right to it, but um, I suggest everybody have one. Even if you're not going to carry a gun or have a gun in your home, at least do that. You know, at least have a tourniquet. At least be able to provide your family with some, some type of medical until first responders arrive. Thank you. And yeah. I am on Facebook, by the way. Still ain't accepting me as a, as a friend either. I tell you about John Boy wife. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go look because I I got like 400 friend requests. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Okay, so I think uh, it's my turn. But Sean, if you want to, hey Sean, if you want to speak, or uh, Zaquan. Hello, hello. Hey Sean. Good, um, what time is it? Good afternoon, everybody. Hey. <laughs> what's up? What's the conversation? Uh, the conversation. I heard firearms. The conversation is um, basically about safeguarding your home. So we're speaking right. on, I mean, everybody's solely speaking more so on firearm, but, you know, anything. Uh, Andre spoke on uh, having, uh, you know, safety, like, kit as well, you know, for cleaning and fixing wounds and stuff like that. But the first question is, um, the first question is, where is it at? Oh, what should def defense look like in a, in a family? So what should defense look like in a family? And whenever you start, we're going to start the time. We're doing seven minutes for everybody. You could do the whole seven minutes or you could do less. What's the defense with your family? Like if somebody comes in and, try to do harm to you, uh, to your family? Whatever you think. Um, this, what, what should defense look like in a family? That's the question. Mm-hmm. It's a good question, actually. Well, defense, hmm, I think you should always first plan. I mean, some things you can't plan for um, when it comes to family, especially when your family is on an offense, I mean, you know, when you're defending your family. But um, first things first, I think – um. You should protect yourself. You should have some type of weapon in the house. Um, uh, uh, I don't want to curse, but a uh, uh, S H I F. It's called the the ish hit the fan type of mentality. Just when something goes wrong, um, you kind of have like a plan. If like you talk to your wife or your kid, just in case they hear something late at night, you say, "Hey, listen, you hear something? You know, alert me." Uh, most likely, I'm assuming. Um, most of the time, the man, the man is usually the, um, usually the, the person to um, defend the family, but women should also be taught how to use a firearm. Um, and uh, what else? I don't know. It's, 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 it's tricky. It's a lot of layers with um, defending your family. Um, well, you know, with defending your household, it's a lot of layers there. Um, for me, what I will do first, you know, when it comes to your home, make sure you have some type of like alarm systems, even though people could get around that, you know, it's just like, you know, it's one of the things you just have for insurance. Second, you should always have a plan just in case you are in a situation. If somebody is breaking in your house, you know, you could tell your wife, kids, or your wife could tell your kids, if you're not home, Hey, listen, if you hear something, go in the closet, you know, don't know what's about to happen, you know, put them in a nice safe haven in the house. Um, third, you know, pull out your firearm. There are laws. And when when you was talking earlier, I don't know who was talking, but um, I heard you talking about um, specific firearms with specific calibers and ammunition and even specific, 
you know, models of guns that you might not be able to have because of your certain um, living conditions. Um, so that's got to be accounted for. I think people should really be taking classes for that too. It's really important. Uh, I think, and, and that's it for me. I, I hope I brought something to the table. I think that's all I have off the top of the head. I'm sorry. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, do a friend request for Andre and Shamika, but I don't know. Somebody do it if they can, please, because I I'm trying to. Well, I couldn't figure it out. But um, thank you, Andre. We appreciate you being on the show. You know, and, and you and thank you too, Sean, for your for your comments. Um, Zaquan, you want to say something? Maybe you just Shabbat listen. Shalom. Oh, hey, what's going on? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Everyone. <laughs> Before you get started, how you get the picture on that man? I was I was trying to figure that out. That's, That's a dope picture. picture. I appreciate that. Uh, I I don't remember, but what I do it's is I look. Man. I know what it is. He said, "How did I get it on there?" But um, I have to uh look and see again. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know, brother. I had to go through them steps. I forgot how I did it. But uh, I thought you were like, I don't know what that is. No, nah, no, nah, that's not. But yeah, anywho, um, as far as safeguarding the family, I, uh, I, I want to say everybody's not a warrior. Some people are healers and some people are teachers and some people are, you know, you have different roles in this nation. So I think you just, I mean, we just need to know who you are first, you know, so, you know, me, I would say I, I'm a warrior. So I, I think the way I think. And, um, you know, the scriptures support that. Our, you know, Messiah says that, uh, uh, you know, to be watchful. The good man, who, you know, he'll watch and he won't suffer his house to be broken in. That's defense already. It's not like we're going out to offend. You know, the, we actually not supposed to offend, but we are supposed to defend. Um, so that's off top. That lets me know that that's strengthened me to say, okay, if someone trying to break into my home, you know, at this point, I have every right to protect uh, uh, my family by any means necessary. And um, I would say also, you know, getting to know your neighbors is another way to safeguard your family, you know, in, the, in this time of peace when everything is not peace. But <clears throat> right now, when you ain't in the midst of any combat or anything, you know, get to know your neighbors. You'll be surprised. Somebody may be looking out. It may be someone, you know, hear a situation going on and they can, you know, call for assistance or whatever. Or it'll be nice to have a community, you know, a brethren you could call and, you know, they'll answer and be there for you. But that ain't always the case. So knowing your immediately your immediate neighbors and making, you know, showing yourself to be friendly in your neighborhood because, uh, you know, the most high can touch one of their spirit, they come through and assist or however. Um, as far as women, I think uh, it should be a balance with them. They should not to defend themselves, but mo they their responsibility mainly should be to, you know, get the children to safety or get themselves to safety, or take up a position where, um, they can um pick off somebody at a safe distance while the man is up front. Um, it don't always have to be a gun, you know. Uh, uh, which is uh, you know, for women, I know um slingshots. <laughs> You know, those things do maximum damage. You know, if you, you hit somebody in the head with a slingshot with that metal ball, and you, you see why Goliath went down. And, you know, David had another slingshot compared to the ones they had today. But I just threw that out there. You know, get creative with your household things. Me, I, like I said, I'm a warrior, so I'm always, I mean, I can pretty much look around my living room and see any, any item in my room could become a weapon immediately. Anything in here. So... You know, that's that, but I think, you know, my wife should all have some type of plan to escape because if 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 I if they break through me, then, you know, I, I would like them to get to safety, you know, so that's that. And, um, you know, if, if a situation ever occurred where somebody come, I'm, I'm always going to lift my voice up, give a fair warning. And uh, I feel like if you don't take heed of that fair warning, then the most high going to be on my side. You know, Psalms 144 and 1, you know, blesses the most high. It will teach my hands to war and my fingers to fight. So, you know, and if I got to use a gun, I'm going to pray my bullet don't miss. 
Amen. That's just how I. That's just how I get down. So I, yeah. you know, I yield with that. You got anything you want to say? Because you were saying something earlier. Oh yeah, I was talking about um, Shalom, you guys. Um, as far as hey, sis. hey, as far as my duties and responsibilities pr to protect, you know, my home, it starts with my children and their obedience. Like, I really do not like disobedient children and children that don't listen. And you gotta tell them stuff six times because if they don't listen and it's time for them to hide and be quiet. I don't need them saying, but mom, da 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 da, or X, Y, Z. And, you know, it, it's ridiculous. So for me, I try to really work and emphasize listen. When I'm telling you to do something, do it. Don't talk back to me because I'm your mom. You know, like I, I stress that with my children when I'm giving a directive. So that's where I start my protection at, you know, with my children being understanding my voice, you know, and understanding when I'm. When I tell you to do something, you need to do it. Right. So, and that's, a, yeah. and that's definitely been a process. Yeah, it's been. Because <laughs> they, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen. No, but I you with that. That's, yeah, that's where I start my defense in the house, teaching my children to listen. And I yield. Yeah. Um, hey, they they got like they got like two minutes left. Can can I say? Can I just respond to what they said real quick? Yeah, no doubt. Hey, that was I love y'all married dynamic. That's why I was telling my cousin, I said I would love one day if he continues to come, maybe his wife would come on too. Like I love how y'all just complimented each other. And what she said was so powerful to me because I didn't even think of that. Calm. You know what I'm saying? You got if you have children that have a hard time listening to you or whatever, when it comes to that type of manner matter, I'm sorry, like would they it's like what would they listen? Right. So like, wow, that was, I like that. Good addition right there. See, the most I good, though, because he gave my wife a job when she worked from home, and the baby got to be quiet now. So, you know, at first, I was like, I don't want my house to be hostage. I need freedom in my house. I don't, you know, you working in the house, I get it, but I need freedom, but over time, like, the baby will go in the room when she working, and she know it's time to be quiet. Mm -hmm. And it clicked on me. I was like, wow. So, you know, the most high kind of put us in a situation where it exercised her to be quiet because her mom, mommy at work. And then now when we do, sh she do it right back. She, you know, and then she be trying to tell us the shit. So, you know, <laughs> if, if you're, if you're doing or you striving, you know, to please the most high, he going to start lining things up for you anyways. And, and that's even coming to the defense. Um, in every detail, macro and micro, you know, it's like that type of faith. You know, I know I have hands, but um, they may not be enough. So, you know, it, you know, I have to have my faith, you know, the most high is gonna be, you know, the shield and, uh, and buckler. So I yield there, because I think that might've been the, the two minutes right there. Trying to be mindful. My, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, I appreciate um you know everybody's comments. I I'm I'm uh I'm real thoughtful about it because you know I'm by myself and I'm um I got three boys and uh Zaquan, I love what you said about the neighbor thing because I'm just sitting here reflecting on um the times where I've had to be the aggressor and you know what happened and all of that. So um so I guess I'll say, especially um, Kaya, what you just said about making sure that ch children are obedient. So um, there was a time recently where it was a, like a, a tornado, what's it called, warning or something. And the thing went off on the phone and um, I was like, okay, we got to go downstairs, whatever. But anyway, long story short, my oldest was kind of like, you know, bucking or whatever. And it was funny because it wasn't until I yelled and raised my voice that he listened to me. So that's excellent that you said that um and, and I, I think my kids is well behaved but apparently they're not um but no but just make sure you <laughs> you emphasize that and I also I also agree as well with knowing your your strength because I agree I'm not a fighter like um I've been in altercations but I ain't I ain't know that's not a natural thing for me to to be physical with anybody so um so then but I, but I do feel like I'm living in the neighborhood that the most high I cast lots of the most have told me to move. So to your point, uh, Zaquan, about like um, 
you know, be, being, um, like understanding your power, you know what I'm saying? Like, un or, or understanding the limits of your power, not that you shouldn't, uh, you know, and uh, start working towards all the suggestions that people have offered here on the show, but then also, because I'm overwhelmed, I ain't gonna lie, I'm like, damn, like, am I failing still as a parent? Like, my kids don't know how to fight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, but being, but, but, but resting in that, uh, being mindful of it, but also resting in what you could do and what was ultimately the most highest promise to us that he would, you know, uh, take care of us and stuff. So those are some of the, my initial thoughts about it, but I do, um, I, I'm glad we're talking about it. You know, I think that I, this is my first time ever being in a conversation about this. And I thought it was just going to be about guns or firearms, excuse me. But I'm learning a lot about different ways in which we can protect ourselves. Because you often see classes. I'm a woman, obviously, but you see classes for women doing self-defense. But, uh, you know, how often do we see whole families taking classes or, uh, you know, different options um, for self-defense and stuff. So it's getting me to thinking. And um, anyway. Appreciate everybody's comments. So we can go to the, the next question, which is, uh, oh, the next question is, is it necessary to own a firearm in today's times? Why or why not? So again, is it necessary to own a firearm in today's times? Why or why not? Duh, I see you. <laughs> I'm gonna make, make sure my sound of the hands is heard. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. I guess I'm first up on here. Um, got my time started. Shema. Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to stop with that joke. It's, it's probably ran into the ground by now. But um, before I go into my point, um, I definitely want to uh, comment on something that was said earlier. And that's um, having a plan, obedience, of course, faith. And as well as the area of understanding that there's more than just a firearm that can be used for protection. Um, awareness is a big component of protecting yourself and your family. Um, I heard a few times, you know, have an escape route to mention. The same way we used to plan in school for fire drills, you should have a, a contingency plan in case you get an intruder in your crib or something happens for those who believe in that silly thing called the zombie apocalypse, should have a contingency plan. Okay, that was a joke. That was a joke. But um, so I just wanted to say that y'all, y'all, y'all are phenomenal and on point with, with y'all statements. But um, I'm gonna be real short. I definitely think that it's important to have a firearm inside your home. Um, just because people coming in, what's the old saying? You don't bring a knife to a gunfight or you don't bring your fist to a gunfight. Um, not saying that we hope things escalate to that point, but um, I, I use the Bun B example as, as a good one. I'm quite sure he wasn't hoping for somebody to run up in there and start shooting at him and his family, but he was damn glad he had something to shoot back when it was there. Because that actually what got the guy to retreat and move back. The guy wasn't expecting any um, oncoming uh, fire. So um, having a firearm, being protected, going to those classes, I know myself, um, I've gone into mixed martial arts classes, and I'm there, and it's, it's mixed. It's women and men in there, all learning, you know, tactics and tools to disarm, or to um, restraint or to even hurt somebody enough to get you to a place of protection. So I think even opening this question up to not only being firearms, but it's always great to have a plan or a course of action. Um, firearms, definitely um, knowing those, like uh, the brother Andra said, and, um, Sean our re, re, re um Sean said um it's important to know what what those rules and regulations behind what you can have, what type of caliber you can have, where you can shoot, how you can shoot a person, when you can shoot a person. Those things are always important to know because you could be in a position where let's say a person is running away from you at that point if you fire at that person and they've retreated from your home 
Um, I think we just, okay. You fire from on a person and they retreat from your home and you hit them in the back, you're liable now, right? So with, with that being said, it's important to kind of look at some of those fine, fine knitted things, those little things, because it could be the difference between either going to jail, saving your life, protecting your family, or killing somebody, which all in all, we don't want to do. But if you're running up into my house, if you're coming into my personal space, then you must not have much regard for your life anyway, right? So not saying that we all want to be aggressive. It's knowing who we are and knowing how to use those things is important. I'm glad uh, I'm glad that was mentioned also. So, um, so Quan threw that in there, which was also a lovely touch. But I would say, why to have a firearm? You don't know what's coming outside and you don't know what you might have to do in order to keep yourself protected. You don't know what state of emergency it might be. I'm not saying firearms are always needed, but it's good to have when they are. Um, as they say, I'd rather be, I'd rather be over prepared than caught lacking. So, um, especially growing up in areas where I did, where, you know, I've seen people who was out here lacking, and they got caught slipping, and it didn't end so well for them. You know, whether they was doing things they had no business doing, that's a whole another story for another time. But the ideal, of course, is not always to be quick to want action, but to be prepared to handle whatever action is brought to you. And if that means having a firearm or two or three or four, put in different areas of the house that are regulated and operating to the guidelines of your state, then that's dope. Like, for example, here in New Jersey, you're technically not allowed to stash your, your ammunition with your firearm. They have to be in two separate lock boxes. But I would rather have them in their two separate lock boxes than not have them at all and have a situation that happened to, heck, even a family member of mine where they ran in and, uh, you know, with all types of things ready to do stuff. So maybe that's because the element I grew up in. But um, it's definitely important to be protected and, uh, and be smart in how you're protecting yourself. And that might include having a firearm or two in your household. Again, I always say as long as it's operating within the law, because you don't want to have a situation where you're in trouble now, because even though you operated in protection, they're not looking at, that, at it that way. And now that's one line of defense removed from the house because you're in jail, which deals with the whole another systematic <laughs> <laughs> thing that we can go into I guess at another show but you know um, those who know about the statistics know that um, we don't fare too well when it comes to the uh, judicial system so I'm going to yield there with uh, 10 seconds so um, I think it's important and necessary uh, to have a firearm or firearms in the home because nine times out of ten the person who you trying to protect yourself from that may enter your home is going to have one for other reasons but I do think the the education part is the most important part to me because you can have a firearm but if you don't know how to properly use it then you're doing yourself a disservice and I feel like, like I going back to the guy Derek, and I hope I'm saying his name right because I I really admire how he um, is raising his children as far as when it comes to um, firearms. I feel like it's, it's necessary for myself to have education, my husband, and our children to have education. I'm uh, blessed enough to have a godfather and cousins who are well-rounded in firearms. Not saying like. Um, Shamai, I actually want to um, talk more or want you to expound if you can when you were saying um, like if somebody entered the home it's, it's not smart to you know approach them with your arms out like I want to know where, where I can get that type of information from but as far as 
firearms themselves and how to shoot them and stuff like that. My godfather, my cousins, the, I can learn from them. We can go to, to gun ranges and stuff like that. My kids too young to go to gun ranges, but they can sit on, sit in on those conversations. I'm sure there's plenty of videos we can um, watch. I want them to know what to do and not have like that. Cause you know, children are goofy. I don't want them to go into this um, ha 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 fun type of thing. Like this, this serious, this can be life or death. This can protect you and your family. So I want the type of education to where if something was to happen that I'm not able to get to it, my husband's not able to get to it. My child is smart enough to know this is how I load it. I'm, I, I don't put my, my finger on the trigger at this time. When necessary, I know how to cock back. I know how to aim and I know how to shoot you in a way that's to do you. I don't want my children to um, have to have it on their conscience, whatever, that they kill somebody or anything like that. But I want them to be able to put you down in a way where you ain't getting back up to do anything to them or anybody else in the home. But I want that to be a last resort. But like I said, it's necessary. But beyond that, the education is the most important part. And I yield with that. All right. Cool. I started my time. Somebody could start my time. I love everything everybody says so far. Uh, I'm going to reread the question for myself. And Shamika, I'm going to hit some of um, what you just brought out. But I got that from Andre, though. So maybe he'll talk on it more, even more than I did. But I'll let you know my uh, perspective of that training that he put me through. Um, question is, is it necessary to own a gun or a firearm? I'm, I'm loving everybody saying firearm, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Because if you get pulled over, do not say you got a gun, especially being black, so-called black. Uh, and I'm sure he gonna speak on that too, maybe. So is it necessary to own a firearm in today's time? Why or why not? I would say yes, because today's time is mostly dealing with firearms. Back then it was swords. It was, he said, I think somebody mentioned bows. All this stuff's still here, but the most advanced thing is firearms now. Um, I like how she brought out a firearm can actually mean nothing too at the same time. It's all about the education, training being within that education. If you do not train, a lot of these hood dudes that's out there won't even hold any type of weight with somebody like Andra. I'm not even going to say myself. I don't want to put myself on that yet, but she honestly can't hold it with me either. But somebody like Andre, because it's a skill to it. Most of them can't shoot. That's why a lot of people die. So if, if you're not trained on how to shoot properly, you might end up hitting somebody behind who you're actually trying to shoot. You have to be able. So I love what the brother says, Sean, as far as most high will and giving me the, the, the tools. But his, and, and I agree with that. But the, the, the knowledge that he gives us in order to, to t soak in information through training. We have to train, because if you don't train, I believe in the most high, the creator, and whoever anybody want, want to call it or him, more than a lot of people. But I know training is, is involved. In Israel, they put people in, uh, uh, into the service, woman and female, uh, male. You have to train. We can't go out there and just think that we're gonna be able to um, protect our family with a firearm that we never use, that we never go sh do any shooting. You can ask this dude, I got four minutes and 25 seconds left, I'm trying to say everything I wanna say. I keep bringing him up, I brought him on here on purpose, man, cause he's really awesome dude, uh, y'all on this stuff. But him himself will tell you if he does not train for a month and a half or two, his skill set will go down. My skill set will go down. That's why all these cops suck. That's true. They don't go train. So let me get to some of the other stuff. A uh, perfect example, those that believe in the Berit HaKadasha, the New Testament, what was one of the first things that those that called Jesus or uh, Yehoshua or Yehoshua or Yahusha told his disciples to do? Get a sword. Sell your stuff. Sell this. Get some money to go get a sword, right? Some argue he also said, don't use it. You could die from it. But that's because he was teaching them more source of time for it. 
it's better to have protection, be skilled in that protection. So when that time comes, because you can die from it too. So you have to be prepared. Kepha or Peter was ready to just go. The other ones had a sword, right? They didn't just go. So it's, it's just depends. Um, what else? I wrote some of the stuff down, what, what was being said. So we got uh, Shamika. As far as the, from my perspective, coming out, he was talking about uh, not when you coming straight at someone, but like, say if, like in my apartment, my new one, um, I have a, you come in and it's a door that separates from my room. So if my door opens, say if somebody breaks in, I could come around that door. If I come around that door, straight arms out, what they're going to see? All of this. But if I come in, boom, as I turn, it's hard to do it in this video. Then that's less of, uh, they're not aware that I'm about to come and just be able to, you know. And there's other tactics with that. Um, last thing I want to say, as far as she said, why or why not? Uh, I agree with uh, Yeshayahu. Isaiah, because it's better to have it than not to have it. Somebody come in with one, you can't defend yourself with no knife. I don't care if you Bruce Lee or Michael J. White. From a distance, you're losing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the brother brought out with a bow, bow like a bow, or uh, I forgot a slingshot. Yeah, you could probably you could probably win with a slingshot if they don't get that gun off at you first and not skilled. Um, so I'm in agreement with that. I also want to put that addition in there. Last thing I'm going to say, because I got a minute and 35 seconds left. I'm using all these minutes. Um, I think that, I don't know if it's in one of these questions, but if it's not, I want to throw it in there. I think training is amazing. I saw a video yesterday of a young girl, and it reminded me of the video that the course that me and my cousin did and I noticed something in his video. He had a, a rifle, some type of rifle. He'll tell you what it is. And every time he was, he would shoot, he took it, the safety off. And when he was going to the next um, position or whatever you want to call it, we was running. As he's running, the safety is, he put the safety back on. Each time before he shot, boom, 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 boom. Nobody, I've never seen that before. And then I saw a video yesterday of a guy that might be the guy you talking about, Shamika. 40 seconds left, y'all. Um, that his daughter had the firearm and she was shooting. I shared it. But if you notice, she was putting the safety on and she was putting the safety off. She had to be under 10 years old, y'all. And the most impressive thing out of everything, which I don't know if y'all, if Andre or anybody else would agree would agree that she should have done. She didn't have no um, ear protection on. So I was like, wow, that's impressive. Because them shots, boy. So with that, are you? I think that's all my answers. 10 seconds left. We good. I think, Andre, you up next. Or not? Uh, okay, uh, Sean, if, if you want to add, you can go up next if you have something to say about the question. Again, the question is, is it necessary to own a gun? Why or why not? Oh, my bad. Hey, Hello? yeah, okay, my bad. Go ahead. All right. Um, so I'm gonna make this simple and uh, I just want to add commentary on some other things because everybody did so good in the whole training aspect of it, and you guys know I'm big on that. Uh, first comment is what Yeshiyahu said about the whole state law separating the ammo and all of that. I think that's crazy because if somebody kicked me a door, if you live in a small apartment, you got to run, grab your gun, unlock the box, and put in the ammo. Like, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. But um, should you own a gun in today's time and why? My answer, yes. Why? Um, what you can do is call your nearest police department in your jurisdiction and ask them, you know, this is my address. How long will it take for a first responder to arrive? And they'll tell you, it can take up to 20 minutes. It can take up to 25. It can take 
much as five. But in five minutes, that's the shortest amount of time. Somebody can do a lot of damage to you and your family in five minutes. Hell, they can even do it in one minute. So that's, it's, it's no debate about that. Should you own, if you can legally do so. Um, but goes back to what the one sister said about the kids. Um, some people are reluctant to own them because of kids. Oh, I have a lot of kids. Well, I know this, we're going to get into this, but one thing I say is educate your kids because curious kids leads to mistakes. You know, um, a lot of these kids are killing other kids with firearms because they simply don't know. All of a sudden they get access to your gun and now you have a mistake. Why? Because that kid wasn't educated on that. You know, if you teach like my one-year-old, we teach her about certain things that is hot, certain food, peppers, things. So when she see them, she's identified with them. She's saying hot, hot. Yes, she knows that it's hot. Same thing with kids and guns. You have to let them know. My, my oldest is nine. She's been around my guns since she was like two. She knows exactly what they are. She knows exactly what they do. And she's seen, she plays video games. She knows what it does. So she knows not to tour around with them. Do she have access to her? No, she does not. Have she shot him before? Yes, she has. Um, but goes back to what uh, Isaiah said about bringing a knife to a gunfight. If someone kicks in your door and you got a baseball bat, I just shared a video today on um, Facebook about that. A guy who was, ran up to two guys that are shooting. This guy hits the one shooter with a baseball bat. The shooter turns around and kill him, killed him. He had courage, but you see where they got him. So, it, and, and especially in our neighborhoods, that's the number one thing that is used in violent crimes, is guns. And my mindset is this. You're not going to fight me. You're not going to kick in my door to fight me, right? I mean, if you want to fight, I fight all day. That's my thing. I love fighting. You know, been training since I was a child, taekwondo, boxing, all of that. That's cool. I had situations in Chicago where I had guns put out on me. Everybody was pulling guns out. And it, it shook me up. And it struck something in me. Once that happened, I kind of snapped. You know, I was like, all right, cool. Well, we're going to do that. I'm going to be good with them. And so I started training with them. Uh, you guys see what I do on um, Facebook. I just like to share the experience. Um, but we have to... We have to like change this mindset of no, you you don't need a gun. I mean, that's that's something that was taught way back in the day. My grandparents, some of them, you know, on, on a certain side was like that. It's like you don't need a gun. You don't need a gun. All you need is this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have faith. You know, everybody know that. Well, uh, most of the people that's on this line that know me, yeah. But it goes back to what Shema said about people using the turn of cheek. Uh, Peter don't use a sword. Yes. But he also said, be harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. You see what I'm saying? So my mindset, I train to be the most dangerous dude ever, period. Physically and even with weapons. I'm always running, standing in shape, still training boxing. I'm not actively fighting now, but still on, on top of my game. But that's my thing because I'm being wise as a serpent. Sometimes a serpent will run. A serpent will be very evasive. You know, sometimes it's, it's not good to fight. Sometimes it's cool to just de-escalate and take the other route. But if you step on me just like that serpent, I will strike you. And it will be deadly, you know. But I'm not an offensive person. I would never go out to harm someone in an offense. But defensively? I can get really violent, but that's my that's not what I want to do. So um should we own guns? Yes, we should. But if you have a mindset where you're a, a very offensive person, don't get no gun. Don't, because you, all you're gonna do is end up being a statistic. If you're gonna lack the education on gun safety and training. I'm not going to go into the training. 
you guys touched on that. Shema, kill that. Isaiah, that was awesome. But uh, I got like 10 seconds. I'm going to yield this time up, move on to the next person. You actually have 50 seconds, but okay. Oh, I got 50 seconds. 45, now. Okay. Well, but yeah, um, it, it, it just, there's no debate about it, man. I mean, like I say, if you, if you're in a, you have a abusive, not anyone on here, but abusive spouse or something like that. Nah, you, I don't think you want to put a fire on me to hand. <laughs> it, it depends on the circumstance. I yeah. Can I say something real quick? Sure. So y'all know I never use all seven of my minutes. I usually use about two. So can I can I um sell him the rest of them? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Drug dealer, drug dealer, talk about <laughs> Mandrix. Okay, um, Sean, if you wanted to, I'm gonna meet your mic because I'm, I'm not sure if you were able to. Hey, yes. hey, <clears throat> yes, hello, yeah, um, good points. Uh, wow, that was incredible, actually. Um, I liked everybody's points on the um, on that topic. Um, that was great. Um, you know, just adding on to that, you know, yes, you should have a gun. Um, like the last brother was just saying, I don't think you should own a gun if you know you may not be mentally stable, you know, because that could just turn out worse for your family or anybody else. So that should be kept in mind too. But what I would, um, what I would like to add too is, um, if you own a gun, if you own a firearm in your house, Training is a must, like you all were saying, but especially if you have more than one gun, I think whenever you go to the range, I think you should practice on each gun just in case, you know, you have an issue, you have a situation where you need to pull your firearm out or if you're in a situation where you need to get it quick, you want to know what you're about to use. You know, you want to use the right, you know, you want to know what you can handle at that time. You know, you don't want to, if you use a shooting a 45, you know, every time you're at the range and then you come in the house, or excuse me, let me rephrase it. If you shoot nothing but a 45 at the range all the time and you practice with that gun and then somebody come in your house and his first thing you grab is a 22, you know, that you're going to be like, oh, shoot, this ain't as fast as I thought it was. And then, you know, you might not have the, the stopping power, you know, to, you're going to you're going to stop somebody, but, you know, you ain't going to have that 45 power that you might have, you know, and vice versa. You know, you want to know what you're using. Um, and that's all I want to add to that. Everybody had some pretty good points. That's all I want to say. Yeah, we appreciate that. Um, Zaquan and Kyle, if you want to jump in. There you go. Okay. Shalom, shalom. Yeah, um... Sell your garments and buy you a sword. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Those are some of the scriptures I heard come out, so I got. I'm gonna address them first. And definitely, wisdom is a time to heal and is a time to kill. And wisdom gonna let you know what time it is, or you'll be foolish and you go do something, and you know, and it wasn't the proper time, and then you know that'll be your demise. But as far as having a gun. Uh, I'm just going to go off what Sister Shamika was saying about the education. Yeah, you should know how to break that gun down, put it back together. You should know how it feels in the dark. You should know it because it's a tool. Like that firearm, brother, is a tool. And any tool can be dangerous. If you work in a factory or whatever, you really hurt yourself dealing with tools and you ain't familiar with any proper training, dealing with safety. So that discipline and that safety is a big deal with having a firearm and just understanding that it's, it's not a light thing. It's only It was only created to take someone's life or to, you know, to stop something uh, forced or, you know, put a yield to a force or stop a force. But it, it, it wasn't like, I don't, when I need to nail something in the wall, I don't grab the tool, uh, a firearm to do that. So, you know, it, it only served one purpose. Um, but I, I say yes. And then I think y'all covered a you know, the mental aspect and everything, but, you know, you can't stop that. <laughs> Somebody could be crazy, they still gonna get a gun, but that's on them. But, um, 
what I was going. It was something else I wanted to touch on. About the firearm. Oh, I think y'all talking about having a knife in a gunfight. I I wouldn't say. I know that's you know that's always been preached. Don't bring a knife to a gunfight, but I disagree with that. I mean, you bring that and the firearm. <laughs> when them bullets run out, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> You got something, and it, depending on your distance and your time and your speed, you know, if you know what you're capable of, you know, you got the right distance, it might be better to pull your knife out and, and sink that in and somewhere soften them <laughs> versus trying to, you know, pull a gun to gun. But, you know, that's that's that. You know, I, I say yes. I'm, I'm for it. I only, I only own uh, one, and I, I'm fine with that at this moment. But I have a lot of other things around here, like nunchucks and wooden swords and machetes. And, and, and you know, I place them around the house strategically, too. So if I got to get to my staff over there in that corner, I know, I know, you know, I know what to do with it. So I don't, you know, I'm going to stay focused on the question about the firearm. But I do highlight when it comes to defense, you know, it's it's a mentality more than just having a gun you know you have to be thinking defense you know all the time you know who can't fall asleep so i yield with that you have anything i agree that we should have a gun everybody should have a gun along with the trainer because i mean when you like when my husband shows me like how to break down a gun it's uncomfortable but it lets me know that it's nothing to play with too so definitely the um training is important because you see a gun and it's like okay it's a gun or you don't want to touch it you want to stay away from it I don't like them personally but I do think that the training and and knowing how to use it and what it does is important okay. it's a powerful tool very powerful tool and and just briefly as well you know uh a contribution or you know some works to my to our community a partner uh, somebody I grew up with we just started a business rise training and defense so this like this is what we're about like you know hosting classes and showing sisters how to defend themselves even children if somebody try to snatch the baby up what, what could a child do to you know uh, prolong this individual from getting them and being able to blow a whistle or whatever you know so this is an important conversation that we're having uh, dialogue or discussion rather um so i yield there young lad you said something because i'm you know we need resources so if you could um i'm not sure if you can see the box on zoom or put it in the facebook or put it in my inbox and i'll do it uh either of you well if it's up and running, i'm not sure if it's up and running or not but de definitely uh if you if, if you if it's up and running you know it'd be good for us to know about it, especially those of us that like live around the corner from you Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we can, we're going to go to the, the last part of the discussion because it's actually the question. The question is, um, uh, how do we ensure that safety is top of mind when safeguarding the household? But also, I know Shemai, you wanted to talk about uh, proper aids to teach children self-defense. Maybe we can roll it into that question. So I'm going to say the question again slowly. Um, how do we ensure that safety is top of mind when safeguarding the household? So what do you do to make sure everybody's safe? And then if, if, if you're able to speak on the, if you have children, speak on, if you can speak on um, how, to, how to fold them into the safety uh, aspect of the defense. Okay, um, <clears throat> it's on me. I'm gonna try to uh, condense this as best as I can. Uh, first and foremost, um, it's been echoed plenty of times on this show have a plan, discuss that plan, have alternate plans and discuss those as well. Um, the same as, like I said earlier, you know, as many times as being in elementary school and as many times a month you have fire drills, you should implement them. Okay, so what happens when this person reaches this level of entry in the house? Or what happens when they get past this barrier? or if you have other instruments or tools stashed around the house, what happens if we're not close enough to get to that? And who's, as um, Shamika said, you know, whose position is to handle that? Whose position is to go over here? 
Are we bunkering down? When should we bunker down? So those things need to be firmly discussed and thought about. Um, we used to have um, first aid kits and that thing. We, we got to restock. Um, but keeping those things handy just in case. And this is not only for um, protection from an intruder coming in, but you can broaden this out to the protection against any type of disaster, whether it be a natural disaster or any emergency. Um, for instance, if your house catches on fire and you manage to get out, have a meeting location. Have a certain amount of time to get to that meeting location. Same thing if there's an intruder and you have to remove yourself um, or they overtake the house and you have to, or apartment or whatever, you have to go. Have a plan. So that's first. Um, when it comes to the protection, especially when dealing with kids, the obedience level has to be there. They have to know their position and they have to know not to be no heroes. Um, a lot of times, you know, especially people who know me, sometimes I tend to take things into my own hands when that might not be necessarily the safest thing to do. Um, talk to them about that. Talk to them about knowing when, knowing your surroundings, knowing the area, knowing when it's best to act and knowing when it's best not to. Um, so I'm going to tuck that all in with education. I think that all fits. Um, if you have a firearm inside the house, in my opinion, I think everybody who is aware of responsibility and consequence should know how to operate, train to use um, that, that firearm or that um, tool for protection, even if it's... Um, hand-in-hand -hand combat. I remember um, as early as four years old, my pops teaching me how to throw a punch. Well, me and my brother were sitting there, you know, throwing punches. Okay, so this is what you do. This is how you step. You know what I mean? Um, same thing with a firearm. I'm not saying you have to be as young as four to be shooting. But um, as I looked into this, I'm seeing people, our children, five, six, seven, eight, competing in competitions. You know what I mean? And I feel as though if there's no harm, and them, of course, we have accidental shootings and stuff like that. I'm not going to act like the statistics aren't there. But the ideal is if you have something that lethal inside your house, I think your children should know the rules and regulations behind using it. Um, of course, knowing the laws, um, for protection. So that covers the age thing. I think once you become aware of consequences and you're strong enough to where you might have to take a stance on defense, then you should know how to defend yourself. Um, and that's, that's my ideal. Maybe 10 years old, if we have to put a number on it, maybe nine. But, you know, I think those things switch depending on the household, where you live, and, uh, what's coming to you. Andre said, you know, call and see what the response time is, but also you can call and get a general idea of what type of crimes happen within your community. And they have statistics, any way you about to move, they have how many sex offenders live inside that town, who's in that town, what kind of crimes are committed, how frequently they're committed, what hours they're committed. So you can fine tune your plan to, to kind of deal with those things. Not saying you're gonna get everything, but the ideal is what's the best way to uh, um, um, keep yourself safe or how to ensure safety. So a conversation about issues, um, understanding who and what age they're in the house, understand who's an aggressor and who is not, because you as the parent or the parent or guardians or whatever, whoever is the head of, that family can decide, okay, this is what I need this person to do because they ain't, they ain't skilled to handle tight situations. When things are on the line, they break down. So they can't be placed here. That's not their job. So tell it a job to what needs to be done, even if it's, okay, I'm considered the man, I'm going to do everything. And then if I'm not there, then it'll delegate that way. So um, I would say have a plan, discuss the plan, understand who's 
incorporated within that plan and have contingencies for when you have guests as well. Um, if you're old enough to use the firearm, make sure you're properly trained and know how. Um, outside of that, know your laws. That's the biggest thing that can save you from some hot water, whether it be with your kids, any authorities, or yourself, any authorities. A lot of these situations, the parents didn't necessarily know their kids and they gave their kids more responsibility than they could handle. Or their kids wound up having more responsibility than they could handle. So then other things happen, which, you know, goes into understanding the psyche of your child. But um, I guess that's not really, I guess you can incorporate that with age too, because by a certain age, you should know. And I know I'm running up on my time here. By a certain age, you should know, or you should know, your parents should know what you can handle. So, um, that's basically it on my, uh, as far as my understanding goes, since I'm over seven minutes now. Um, just understand and, and, and implement the best way you see and um, know what's going on in your house. So I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew somebody was going to do it. I knew somebody was going to do it. <laughs> and it, and tried, it, had, it had to be a CEO. It had I to tried. be him. He the GOAT. He, could, he, ain't, he ain't on the other way. He the GOAT. <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm going to go back to what I said at the beginning. Uh, planning and education. I think the word of the day is education. Word of the day is education, planning the education. So, and like you said, drills to execute. Um, and I know my kids' strengths and weaknesses. So, like I said, I, I'm and I think Shema said this. Uh, you got you you have you have pepper spray at your door, something like that. Did you say that? Andre. Oh, okay. So, okay. So don't like based off the conversation. I'm going to start implementing little things like that, uh, be it pepper spray or another form of protection um, just throughout the house. Because right now we only we, we do have um, one firearm and it is put away, but only we know and only we can reach it. So for my children, I do want to um, add other um, forms of protection as well as um, me knowing they, their strengths and weaknesses. So I know uh, who would be smart enough and intelligent enough to um, handle a phone conversation, um, calling to get help and be able to fully explain, give the address and tell what's going on in detail. So I know who can do that. So, you know, that would be the person I put in place for that particular thing. And as far as, um, can you close my door, sweetheart? As far as um, the children knowing about firearms, based off this conversation, um, I don't think it's ever too soon. I, I like, um, like I said, I always admire how Derek operate with his children and firearms, but I've always, oh, my, my kids to goofy, my kids to this, but I know um, the level of respect that my kids do have for me because. Um, like, like she was saying, you have to start with disciplining them, making sure they can listen and, and everything. Um, when you say something, that's it. I don't have to say much. I got this little stare that tear their little soul down and it's wrapped from there. So from there, I know that I can get them to do, you know, what I need. Mm. But I also know my kids that aren't ready to be, you know, touching and handling firearms. But that don't mean they can't learn because there's plenty of videos and books and things that I can read with the ones that I don't feel that's physically ready to touch. So I'm, we are, and we were just talking about this um, while this was going on. So there are certain ones we want to bring in one at a time to teach them. So I don't think a group discussion is unnecessary because kids look at each other and laugh and play, and that's not this is a serious moment. So. There are children who I want to bring in right now and 
have physically learned, but then there's ones who I just want to um, just get the education and know that this do these things. So, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, I think it's basically strength and weakness when it comes to kids, because I know my six year old, he a whole fighter. He don't play no games. He little is what, but if you disrespect, and he, he's a protector. He's, he's very, very protective. If you disrespect, he feel like you disrespect me or his sisters or anybody, any type of way. He like, what you trying to do? He don't care how big you is. He ready to fight. So I know, um, I feel like power is going to be one of his strengths. Like, cause he, he a little thick something too. So I know that power is, is probably going to be one of his strengths and physically being able to put his hands on you. So I'm just, I'm actually still learning different strengths as far as that. Cause we was just talking about protection um, yesterday. Cause my oldest son said he ain't going to my daughter's house to take out her trash. But then that made me get on protection. So I just feel like it's learning your kids, knowing their strengths and weaknesses, knowing who's ready and who's not ready. I think that education should start as early as you can, but for them physically being around it, seeing it and touching it, I feel like you just have to know your child and if your child is ready at that moment. But the actual education can start when they're able to comprehend. And that's what I learned based off um, this conversation. So I yield. I don't know if my seven minutes up because I wasn't timing myself, but I'm done. All right. Good stuff. I took a few notes on some things that were said I want to put out there, but I'm starting mine now. Uh, I'm probably not going to go to full because I see it's 140, so I want to try to be as quick as possible. To sum everything up, it really sums everything up. It's what she said, like she said, education. Like I was saying earlier, that's it. Everything. Even with the brother when he was saying, uh, when he was bringing out as far as, uh, I think it was Sean, um, when he was responding about the gun to, uh, um, a knife to a gunfight. I agree with him. You know what I'm saying? I guess when I was speaking, it was more so like, uh, best case scenario, like both of y'all got a similar skill set. It's like you, you know, but he right. You know, you see it all the time. Like somebody like Andre, he didn't have his firearm and then have his, uh, his, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Like the knife, um, combat knife. You know what I'm saying? For those close interactions. But that's all education. That's all skills. Skill sets build from education. You know what I'm saying? Uh, one of the only other things I want to say is everybody knows this saying, you're, on, um, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Let me say that again. Maybe not the little toddlers, but anybody that's like six, six and up, probably you're only as strong as your weakest links. Meaning like she said, um, knowing who makes the phone calls, knowing who's not going to lack behind if you all got to get out of there. That's, they will be your weakest link if they're not paying attention, if they're not trained. Um, the question real quick, how do you ensure the safety is top of mind? By doing training weekly, monthly, I would say weekly at least once a week, keeping it. you By repetition is how you become perfect. We always talk about perfect. I believe in being perfect. The only way to be perfect is to continue to practice. Practice makes perfect, right? That's what we say. So in order to have this, perfect, this, this thing perfected, we got to practice it. A lot of times we're not uh, good is because we don't practice it. Um, how do you engage children in this, in this work? By that practice. So... Um, I like the one thing that she brought out too is I think that we should focus if they're strong in all these areas, focus on the weakness, do more, to spend more time on the weakness so they could be up to par with the rest of the team. Think about basketball, any other sport, they always try to get everybody on the same level in some sense. So they have certain people that focus on the weakness. You know, you might have teammates that might be strong and be like, Hey, you know, Hey Jeff, go work with, you know, Wilson or something on this since you're really good at this type stuff. Um, last thing I'm going to say, four minutes. I'll be done in one minute. Um, I remember, and I, don't, I know he's not going to say this, but uh, my cousin, he he has a lot of firearms, right? Um, and it's people in our family that used to kind of think he was crazy by putting these videos and stuff up. You know what I'm saying? When all he was trying to do was educate them. But that goes into how we was talking, like most of us so-called black people, 
we don't speak on these things. A lot of people say, oh, I want no gun, I don't need no gun. So one of the things we was talking about was like, man, you know, his main job is to protect his family. So if it came like some walking dead type of instant uh, uh, situation happened, I'm not saying this is gonna happen, but if that walking dead situation happened, first people, the uh, first thing people gonna do is call him. They say it now, oh, we come to your house. No, you not. This is what you say, you say, no, you not. The people I'm gonna call is somebody like Andre, I mean, uh, Shema, you know, John Boy, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I don't know if you got a firearm, yes, yeah, but people who actually have firearms that has training. Because the more that you have, then the more you can protect. We can all protect our family. You bring people that don't have any uh, type of training involved, and they're just trying to, it's dead weight. It's dead weight. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, we should protect our people and stuff, but this is what we're trying to do to protect them, by educating them. Bring them on board. You know, letting them know about firearms. Letting them know to train yourselves and the children. You're neglecting what we're trying to put out there. So I think the biggest thing is just education and uh, working on your weaknesses uh, and daily, uh, weekly training, at the least monthly training. And that's it. That's all I got. All right. It's on me? Yes. All right. So um, how can we ensure safety and get kids involved? All right, with kids, you got to start with safety. Um, like I said, you have to make them know what is a firearm and what it can do. You got to let them know what it can do in the hands of good people, what it can do in the hands of bad people. Um, one thing I suggest is what I did with my daughter. I started her with um, airsoft, airsoft gun. It's like this little gun, you can get them from Walmart, Amazon. You put the little plastic pellet team. And what I did, I taught her the safety, the safety rules. I taught her how to use the gun because a lot of these airsoft guns, they have the same function as the real gun. Like I carry a Glock 19 and I bought a Glock 19 airsoft gun. So it's the same operation. And um, so, you know, I taught her the rules, you know, and, and it's four major rules that I teach. Is um, number one, treat all guns as if they are loaded. Number two, never point your gun at anything that you're not willing to destroy. I don't care if you're picking up that little plastic gun and you're just looking at it. Don't point it at your sister. Don't point it at mommy or daddy if you're not willing to destroy us. So she got that concept in her hand. The other rule, number three, is to keep your finger off the trigger until you have your sights lined up on that target. Number four, be sure of what's behind your target, in front of that target. And that, that right there applies to everybody, all the rules across the board, because a lot of people have these guns and understanding what it can do. You know, people using... Um... Your volume, Aki, your volume went low. Can you hear us? Hollow point, that's the one that hits the target. Andre. And that all that energy He can't hear us just talking. That person, that all right, let me try to. Um, that means his audio went to his, um, his, uh, uh, like he's talking on the phone. So if he just leave the audio and go back in the audio, he can see where I put a red mark. Hello? Hey, we couldn't hear you for about a whole minute. Yeah, that's good. What was the last part you had? Because my sister, she keep calling, but I keep denying it. I don't know why she keep calling. Can the last you, thing was you, a, you was on, you was finishing off on the fourth one. Well, you you was done with the fourth one, the fourth rule. That's the last thing I heard, and you said it, it goes across the board. Yeah. How many minutes are left? Yeah. How many minutes left? You had uh, four minutes and like thirty seconds left. You still oh, sound yeah. low, though. Yeah, you still sound low. Hello? Hold on. One second, hold on. He said one second, hold on, y'all. All right, you hear me better now? Yeah. You got about four, right. four and a half minutes, man. Four minutes and 30 seconds. All right, all right. All right, cool. 
But no, um, the fourth rule was to be sure of your target and what's behind and what's in front of that target. So, you know, like I was saying, a lot of people, they use target ammo as self-defense ammo. You cannot use that because the target ammo is the ball ammo. It's going to punch right through that target. If you hit hitting a, a person or whatever, it's going to go in and out in most cases, depending on where you hit them at. And it can hit who's ever behind, who, you know, or the wall behind. It can go right through that wall again. So um, I tell people use the hollow points. That's, a, that's called your defense ammo. And what that ammo is, it's a hollowed out in the center of it. And when it hits that target, it spreads. What that spreading does, it slows down the velocity of that round. That way that, that target or offender is absorbing all of that energy. Um, I do drills with my, my daughter as far as uh, tourniquets too. I put a red mark on my arm, on my leg, anywhere. And I come in the room and I tell her, I'm hit. You got to find that wound. So if I'm in a situation where I'm in a gunfight and I'm bleeding out, if I'm unconscious, my daughter, she and my wife, they know how to search me for that wound and where to apply that tourniquet help. So I will randomly come in her room and throw the tourniquet in her lap and just tell her I'm hit. And she started doing this thing where she assesses. She finds it and she straps that tourniquet on. What I'm doing is inducing her under stress. So I'm telling her, hurry, hurry, hurry. So, it, it, and that's the thing. With training, you have to put yourself under stress. That's why my training is so intense because you got to think about it. Intruders, people out here that are doing these crimes, they operate under this type of stress every day. They're used to that. That's their thing. You don't do that. So that's why training is important. And the last thing I'm going to yell is, you know, you're defending of your household. You got, you got two minutes, 35 seconds, Aki. Two minutes, 35 okay. seconds. You're good. Cool. All right. So you to defend outside of your household, too. You know, defending outside of your household is meaning when I'm out walking with my kids, I'm in the mall, wherever, carnival, doesn't matter. Nobody walks behind me. Everybody walks beside or in front of me. Um, I'm also watching everyone else, too. I'm watching who watch my kids. You know, yeah, they're cute, but I'm keeping an eye on everybody. When we go into certain restaurants, we don't sit where if somebody gets to popping off shots where we trap. I, we try to sit near the closest, closest exit. And when sometimes I go in these places, I just play a game with my oldest daughter. I just say, hey, can you find the nearest exit before I do? And she'll look up, she'll see the red exit sign. She know that we want to sit somewhere near there. And I always have my back up against the wall. Like, I, I don't want to sit out in the center where I'm not able to look what's behind me. So that's, that's one of the things that I do um, outside. And it's not paranoia, it's just education is being prepared. I mean, it's, it's this world. I mean, if people look at it as other than that. I don't know what to tell them because this world is, is unexpected. You live in an unexpected environment. You just got to prepare for it just in case it pop off. But yeah. Hey, Ak, you got some people saying you need to hold some classes, man. They'll come to Illinois. I drive. <laughs> I'm down the street. I'm down the street from y'all. I drive up there. Down there, cool, man. I'm, that's you know what, and that, I've been thinking about doing that. I'm I'm down for that too. Yeah, we appreciate it. I definitely need it. So. Everything. I'm up here writing stuff down. I'm like, I'm watching the playback. This. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I've been trying to get in contact with Hundred for a minute, man. It's, it's it's funny that we on this show together now. I know, man. That was dope. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. I mean, everybody, I, I, I love this, man. I love the conversation. You know, everybody's big on training. And that's that my cousin to tell you. That's my thing is training. I don't care how many guns you got, how many, whatever. If you're not training, it's nothing, you know? Right. Oh, we, we, well, well, we done, we done kind of skip the order. Yeah, we're going to keep going to Sean. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me go on his thing. Let me see. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, I have nothing to add. Every, um, all the points were solid. Um, I like how um that brother was talking about doing the training with his kids. I, I gotta clap. I like that. Um, everybody has some good points. I really have nothing to add there with that topic. Okay, we appreciate you. Um, oh, the Quan and his household. 
Shalom. I'll try to be brief as well, because y'all pretty much nailed everything as far as, um, let me see what the question was again, if somebody can read it back. If not, I'll read it. Uh, it's two parts, right? Yeah, my bad. Let me see if I can scroll back up. Uh, okay. Um, how do we ensure that safety is top of mind when, when safeguarding the household and then how do you engage children in this work? So it's two questions, but if you can fold the kids into the safety question, then that's the work. Yeah, to, to, to ensure it is just to make it priority, make it a part of your lifestyle, which you exercise throughout the day. Um, I mean, when we talk about safety, there's so many different aspects involved, like you know, you want to make sure you're healthy, you know, that you're stretching and all that, and, you know, it's a lot of different factors, but as far as like uh, defense, you know, you just being vigilant and watchful. And again, uh, I like the, some of the examples the brothers brought out, the, uh, the, the, uh, the brother, is it Andre? It says something else on my phone. Bro. Andra. Oh, Andra, gotcha. Okay. So it says the right thing. I just can't read. All right, <laughs> brother Andre. <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, yeah, some of those things, uh, practicing and implementing every day that it become a part of your lifestyle. That's how you ensure that safety is, you know, the top thing in your house. And uh, as far as the children, just you know, gauging where they at. And um, uh, the brother uh, Andre again brought out another good thing with the aerosol guns or even a BB gun. That BB gun got a nice little weight to it to get familiar with it. And um, it also can help them with aim, uh, target practice and you can teach them the seriousness of it. Whether, you know, with the BB gun, you can go out and, you know, hit certain things and show the power behind that. So that those type of things visually will help your child to understand that this thing, again, is not a toy, but a tool used to... Uh, you know, take someone's life. When you attend on using it, that's what you use it for. So, and it's not a pretty sight either. So, you know, um, getting children involved, you know, my wife and I, I bought us some walkie talkie. So when, when I go, when we go walk him to the bus stop, we got that on out our cell phones. That's a nice direct uh, link to, you know, be able to respond if she's there, she can say, hey, it's something going on, vice versa. So that's something to uh, communication, uh, constantly communicating in these things. Uh, I think brother, uh, yes, yes, Yahoo brought out uh, uh, doing like, it was somebody brought out about drills, like how they used to do the drills in school. Implement that, get creative in your own home with it, you know, and, and nobody home the same. Like brother uh, Shamar brought out, we said when he coming out the door with his arm extended, you know, you want to keep it close. Um, just knowing the angles of your house, like I, I pay attention to those things. Like, if somebody coming on my stairs with a gun, I got a hammer for them right there. I tell you, it's gonna do some maximum damage. To so you know, it's just I know my angles. You know, so it's just like, it's I. If it's in you, it's in you, and you cultivate it. If it's not, there's things you can practice and and you know work on daily that help you become more aware of, you know, protection is concerned. So I yield on that one because y'all pretty much nailed everything. You mm -hmm. want to say something? No, I think everybody nailed everything as well. Well, she think everybody nailed everything as well. <laughs> can, I, can I say something real quick, man? Look, look, I think we should, um, I think we should throw in like a, I was watching a TV show. And the TV show I was watching, I think it's called um, Riverdale or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of y'all saw that. But it's a girl on that redhead, and she is a beast with <laughs> an arrow. I think it's an arrow, arch, arrow archery. Like, I shoot, other, by the way, arrows. It's I, other, I it's, have a pound pound bow. Right. It's other things we can use. You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody is scared right. to use a gun, man, to get them trained on the arrow, on the arch. Good job. The, you know the crossbow, the crossbow, crossbow. yeah. You know, One a nice thirty pound crossbow. If you you know your distance, shoot down a flight of stairs. It, it'll do something, you know. Unless you're dealing with a whole another entity, like you know some forces, and they got gear on and everything. It may just be best to submit and just put in the most high <laughs> hand. But if it's just one of these crazy fools up the street. 
then you know I, you know, like I, I'm big on fair warning. Like if I if I catch on, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna wear you in my house. Leave, and if you don't leave, then it's fair game. That's how I look at it. You know, and then that's when Ruberine come out. <laughs> and then also like um oh, and then also like <laughs> <laughs> like um. You know, it was brought out that everybody's really not um, a fighter or, you know, have the warrior spirit. But um, my husband teaches me how to get out of certain holes. Like, um, he'll be like, okay, what if somebody grabbed you like this? What you gonna do, you know? And then I'll show him what I would do. And then he tells me, you know, he'll be like, okay, yeah, that's good. But then he'll tell me like, what I should do, what I should do, and like we'll practice that, we'll practice that, and a and a until it feels a little natural, and um, I mean they work, you know. So practicing how to get out of certain holds or things like that is really conducive to instead of just teaching your children how to fight, 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 attack, attack, you can teach them how to get out of uh, certain situations too. Right. You know, a lot of them hoes, she know how to get out of it naturally, though. She just explodes. So. <laughs> but I wouldn't have known what she capable of if we're not practicing her training. It. So, you know, this, you know, that's that's the big deal. This is an excellent discussion to have because this should be on the forefront of our nation and our mm-hmm. individual communities and homes. Or let me say it the other way. It should be on the forefront in our minds and then within our families, then within our communities, tribe, whatever, and then, you know, nation, but in that order, you know, so that we can um, better defend ourselves when these situations come on, you know, they snatching babies and all type of stuff. And a lot, and I know when people get their uh, firearms, a lot of times it's for self-defense, but if you, you can also use your firearm to, defend someone else or help someone else as well so that's a big deal you know because if you see something going on and someone defenseless you can potentially help them in that situation too so it's not just about it's not a a selfish thing you know it's it, it go both ways you know being able to defend yourself it would be wise to uh have something to be able to defend yourself uh there's just Keep an open mind, and I learned from Jackie Chan a long time ago. Anything can be a weapon. Anything can be a weapon. So I, I just naturally look at it and be like, man, I will bust somebody here <laughs> wide open with this thing. I pray I never have to, though. But that's how I think, you know? So, <laughs> you know, so I yield. I yield. Yeah, this is this is an excellent conversation. Well, I feel a lot better about a lot of stuff, uh, <laughs> and I feel um, a lot more uh, equipped to, to know even to who who to reach out to. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all forbid something happen. Um, so I, I thank thank everybody for coming on. Shama, thank you for bringing the topic up. Um, it was not it was not a top of mind, at least in my mind. So thank you for for bringing it up and for bringing your cousin on. Thank you, Andre. Uh, hopefully one, one one day we'll meet face to face and stuff and um. And definitely want to con- uh, thank you, Sean. You everybody, to me, right. I'm gonna hug you, Andre. Like I don't want to get hit by your wife, but I I do hug people, so it's a fair warning. It's nothing freaky. It's just I love my people. Um, but hopefully, <laughs> most I will we'll be we'll be back next week. If uh, I was saying that uh, the conversation should definitely continue. If you have links and resources, if you know people in your community, just drop them in the uh, the video you can even drop in it in uh, after the the streaming uh, stops if you want to send messages on the love language um page you can drop it on there you can inbox anybody individually and we'll do our best to share it. but we all know something and if you know something in your community and and uh, resources um online or whatnot please share because the more we share the more we care okay thank you really? all right er- <laughs> Go ahead. I just want to say, man, I appreciate all of y'all tuning in. I appreciate all of y'all that came on. I really appreciate the married couples that come on here together. This is what we're really trying to push. I know a few of us are single, but we really love you all. Uh, you all live, having a long longevity in your marriage. Andre, you two and your you, wife, man. seven years, but 16 years knowing each other, I think. And, um, you know, this discussion is kind of different than what we normally do. 
but I think this is very, this was very important. You know what I'm saying? So, man, thank all y'all. And brother, share your information. Uh, what's that, Sean? Share your information, man, with the business you're doing, because I think that this, aside from all the, the scriptures that people throw, aside from all the we love the world that people do with the, the you know, I think this is very, um, th this is left out. This is something that's really not talked about. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm saying? So, man, Andre, same with you, man. Get out there, man. People need to get your knowledge, man. You know what I'm saying? Time is now. Time oh. is now. Come, come. I want to say as well, anybody who knows me, I show up when the when it get tough. That's what I do. I know Sister Tamar and, and stays out here and uh, Brother John and his uh, Asha Shamika, you know, so it's like when it comes to defense too, outside of our family, it's tribal too, it's community too. So just us having this type of uh, dialogue, you know, monthly or whatever, and having some set plan amongst us who are in the same city <laughs> is a good way to, uh, you know, be familiar. And it just builds our confidence knowing we got somebody to rely on if something go down. I know me and John had a conversation before I asked him, and you know, he pretty wise on when to move and when not to move, <laughs> but you know, I, you know, we gonna just pray don't nobody go over there and you mess You talking about Hoodie John or John Boy? <laughs> <laughs> what, what you want, Hoodie John or John Boy? Huh? Oh, uh, both of them combined. <laughs> <laughs> they combine the farm for a try. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this yeah, is, that's, just want to put that right there. Oh, I just wanted to say this real quick. Um, Shema, you said this this different than our norm, but this is love language and protection is a love language. You can't show no love if you you can't you can't how are you gonna protect you won't protect nobody you in love. Oh, that's right. You better you better speak speak the truth and shame the devil. Goes back to me in love. <laughs> that was deep. I wanted to um the was the client was talking about with the hold. I was gonna say this, but then I, I just was like let me pull back because I really wanted to stay on the firearm top topic. But I think um, protection can come in many forms because I, I said I was having a conversation with the kids the other day and I was joking with John and I said, I'm going to start letting them beat each other up and then, you know, make them hug for two hours after. But because a lot of, I know you said the people that fight and got the warrior spirit and stuff like that. The reason why I have that fight in me is because I have two big cousins that I call my big brothers. I'm the only girl out of four boys, it's my, my grandma's grandkids. They are one and two years older than me, but they're ginormous. And they used to beat the bricks off. So I had to find many ways to get out of all type of holes and situations. And no matter what type of fight I got into, I'm talking jumped or anything, they always used to say, oh, this ain't nothing we used to do. You worse than this. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it was like a that was my education on protection and how to fight and how to get out of stuff. Now, I don't want to go there because we got a little serious. But that makes me want to put them in type of some type of martial arts or something so they can learn that same kind of fight. They've got to learn that in that manner, but in a more professional setting. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think that's, that's very important, too. Sweet. Right. Indeed, I know. That was um, nice, connecting it to the love. It is. Yeah. yeah. That was perfect. Absolutely. Um, All right. So we're going to get ready to close out. Um, pray everybody have a good week. Uh, Y'all stay safe. Pun intended. But um, most likely we'll be back next week. New topic, uh, 12, East, 12 Central, 1 Eastern, new topic. Uh, definitely share the video. Um. Uh, as broadly as you can so we can keep the conversation going and until next time shalom shalom, right. shalom, shalom. like comment and subscribe oh yeah and share <laughs> <laughs> and share, and share. <laughs>